Hi, and welcome to Discover Oklahoma. I'm Lauren Nelson. And I'm Dean O'Lally. Today we're coming to you from one of the most celebrated destinations in the state. We're at Tulsa's Gathering Place, and it's not just Oklahomans talking about this incredible spot. National and international awards have celebrated this landmark. Among them, USA Today called it the best new attraction. Time Magazine listed it as one of the world's 100 greatest places, and National Geographic counts the playground here amongst the 12th most mind-bending in the world. We'll show you around throughout the show. But first we head from here, one of the best places on earth, for a trip that is literally out of this world, so to speak. Yeah, that's right. Let's head to the Oklahoma Aviation and Space Hall of Fame. Oklahoma has a rich history in aviation and space exploration, and many famous Oklahomans have made big contributions to the industries, and what better way to celebrate them than a visit to the Oklahoma Aviation and Space Hall of Fame. The Oklahoma Aviation and Space Hall of Fame was a program of this building um, from the early 80s on, and we inducted some people, some notable people, um, that have Oklahoma ties to aviation and space, and we have some really amazing honorees, people like Tom Stafford, Wiley Post. You know, it's, it's a great way to explore our history through the eyes of aviation and space. Our founder, John Kirkpatrick, thought it was an important way to honor not the amazing ties to Oklahoma, but the visionaries, the people that really were the, the, the founders of some of the amazing, I mean, Wiley Post created the pressure suit, so, and that was here in Oklahoma. So when we talk about the Oklahoma Aviation um, and Space Hall of Fame and its history, you have to mention the names Clarence Page and Thomas Stafford, because these are the men that actually made it happen. The Hall of Fame explores all of the Oklahoma ties to aviation and space, including some important people from our great state. We've got uh, Wiley Post, Will Rogers, Clarence Page, Tom Stafford, I mean, when you talk about people that have really contributed to Oklahoma aviation and space history, you'll find them right here. And even though we are not inducting uh, people right now, you will find some amazing history of inventions and exploration that have ties right here in our own backyard. The Hall of Fame opened in the early 1980s, but it has recently reopened with a new design. More interactive and visitor friendly, it's a must stop spot. We've recently redone the Oklahoma Aviation and Space Hall of Fame because we wanted it um, displayed properly where everybody could experience it hands on and through all of our artifacts. So though we are rotating through artifacts, there will always be an interactive panel where you can find somebody that you always wanted to learn about or perhaps even a relative. You can find all of our inductees are here on an interactive panel that show their accomplishments, their history, their ties to Oklahoma and when they were inducted. We're really unique in what we have to offer with the diversity of things from bicycles to planes to space because if you look at the timeline they all are related. When you're here you'll see some amazing artifacts from space exploration and aviation highlights. We have some awesome things like uh, space patches from missions. We have uh, Amelia Earhart's thermos <laughs> that's on display either um, in our gallery or in the, in the Hall of Fame. You'll find all sorts of really interesting things. What's really amazing is you might not know it but uh, Charles Schultz, the illustrator, animator, and, and Peanuts, played a really big role in space. He was a space fan and he did some cartoons and we have some of his original hand-drawn cartoons that related to the space missions. And of course you'll see some famous airplanes. We have on, on display tons of really incredible aircraft from experimental planes from Tom Stafford to really important historical planes like the Louise Thaden plane. She won, she was a woman who won one of the first airplane races and so we have her actual plane here. To explore the Oklahomans who have made great strides in aviation and space exploration, plan your visit to Science Museum Oklahoma to see the newly reopened Oklahoma Aviation and Space Hall of Fame. So there's a really a great way to honor these people with these Oklahoma ties and it started right here because we have such a rich aviation and space history and we that was part of our building when we first opened and it's an important part of our building today. You know, with our mission to reveal the wonder and relevance of science, we hope that everybody can take a look at this and see themselves. Whether you're an adult, a teen, or a child that's exploring what they want to be in the world, there are so many interesting things. Science Museum Oklahoma houses the Oklahoma Aviation and Space Hall of Fame. You can learn more by visiting their website, sciencemuseumok.org. Back here on Earth and not too far from where we're standing, there's another museum that's unlike anything else. Julie Chen takes us to the Vintage Sewing Center and Museum right here in Tulsa. If you're a sewer, this is like Disneyland. <laughs> 
from machines to memorabilia to murals, Tulsa's Vintage Sewing Center and Museum is humming with history. The thing about sewing is it's full of sentimental value. You know, the stuff your grandmas and great grandmas did. I was asked to basically make a home for grandma's machine. And boy, would Grandma be proud. The museum is home to a huge collection. There are over 800 sewing machines on display here, many of them donated. Nebraska, Arizona, New York, England, Japan, just all over, people send them. A lot of times they'll drop it off anonymously and we're like, we don't even know who brought it. And sometimes really incredible machines. Some date back to the 1800s, some are rare finds, and all have great stories behind them. W.K. Binger is the museum's curator and sewing machine storyteller. That came from New Zealand. The lady sent us. It's uh, 1874, I believe, or 84. And it actually meant the world to her. It's a wonderful little sewing machine. When you visit, you can book WK for a tour that lasts an hour or one that lasts all day. There's also a self-guided option. Either way, you'll wander through multiple themed rooms on multiple floors ranging from Victorian to industrial to a special children's space. Kathy Geringer is hoping to pass along her passion for sewing to her grandchildren. They're having a ball in there, yeah. And that's what I want for them. I want them to enjoy it and take it up for their life. It's fun because you get to use the sewing machines and you don't just have to look. That's right. This is a hands-on museum where kids and adults are encouraged to sew. From what I've been told, there's nowhere else on earth that you'll be able to sew on these because, you know, people won't allow you to. And I insist on it, actually. That includes trying out this industrial machine commissioned by the USS Batfish. It was used to make military naval bags and parachutes. Now visitors are invited to start up the machine and leave their signature with a stitch. I can't break her, right? You can't break her. Okay. Go for it. You heard that, Oklahoma. Okay. The museum is also a repair center. Plus, it offers classes and holds birthday parties. This is a kid-friendly place where children under 15 get in free. Here, they run around and every bit of the museum is fun for them because they can touch everything. The Vintage Sewing Center and Museum, bringing people together with a common thread. Revisiting the past and bringing back the old culture of sewing where everybody knew how to sew. That's where I'm hoping it goes, where everybody learns to sew and everybody's just really into it again. Anybody can find something here they like. Even if you're not a sewer, maybe you can learn. A good place to learn. A lot of fun sewing machines that are awesome. In Tulsa, I'm Julie Chin, Discovering Oklahoma. The Vintage Sewing Center and Museum is located at 5528 South Peoria. They're open Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. Well, you really can't get better than a warm cup of coffee and a cookie straight out of the oven. We'll take you to the Oki owned shop where you can get both. Bedre has been making the chocolate covered crisp for more than 30 years. So I would say that, you know, we have perfected the art of the chocolate covered potato crisp. Plus chocolate creations born right here in the Sooner State. They're large, they're very large. You get more than enough, you get some to take home. Plus the to die for cinnamon rolls that make this dinner well worth the drive. It's all ahead right here on Discover Oklahoma. There's some things you just can't contain. Oklahoma Today Magazine is bursting with culture. Mind-blowing restaurants, trips, adventures, and so much more. Open your copy, then hit the open road. Unleash your curiosity. Set your spirit free. Subscribe today for only $14.95. Oklahoma Today Magazine. Break through the ordinary. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from Tulsa's Gathering Place. So many incredible things to see and do here, but without a doubt, the playground is one of the top spots. Now, when you think of kids and playgrounds, candy can't be too far behind. But the candy, actually the chocolate made right here in Oklahoma, is certainly not just for the little ones. That's right. Let's check out how Bedre chocolates turn out the treats every year. This one just in time for Valentine's Day. 
This time of year, there's no better way to show someone you're sweet on them than gifting Bedre Fine Chocolates. Bedre Fine Chocolate is fine chocolate. We just love what we do here and we make a really excellent high-end gourmet chocolate. Well, we do a lot of handcrafting. We, we have full automation, but we also do handcrafted products. So uh, we have that uniqueness to it. Uh, we put together our own combination of recipes for our centers. So we use, we use the, uh, not flavorings for our fruit centers, like strawberry and orange and raspberry, but it actually comes from a, a, you know, a fruit. And so we have other mixes that we put together and that's, I think, what makes it really special. Here at the retail store, you can find the best assortment of the handcrafted chocolate, along with some products you won't find anywhere else. Mainly in the retail store, you really get to see the whole full array of all the gift baskets that we have. And then we have a lot of uh, gift packaging, like if you want to buy the chocolate bars and all flavors, there's several combinations of gifting that you can do that in. Uh, we also have in the, in, the can, in the chocolate case, we make a lot of things that we just don't package and retail that you would find in a retail store, but you would, you'd be able to get it here. While you're here, watch the sweet treats being made from the viewing window. We have a huge glass uh, wall that we call it that you can watch production. Being in the production room reminds me of the I Love Lucy episode where Lucy and Ethel are working at the chocolate factory stealing candy straight off the conveyor belt. We promise we didn't snag any samples from here, but how could you resist when you step into the retail store? There's something for everyone. Fruit filled, chocolate covered nuts, milk, dark or white chocolate, they have it all. We put things in it with nuts and crunchy stuff and pecans and coconut and I don't know, we make a lot of great stuff. Bedre has been making the chocolate covered crisp for more than 30 years. So I would say that, you know, we have perfected the art of the chocolate covered potato crisp. And then of course we added the, the corn twist, which in the white fudge is, is just amazing. People just absolutely go crazy over it. During holidays, they have special items you can order. Our signature for Valentine's is our chocolate covered strawberries. I mean, they're the largest strawberry that you can get during that time of year. They're long stemmed. Uh, we sell them in a pack of six. When you're buying for your Valentine, be sure to make a trip to Bedre Fine Chocolates in Davis, right off of I-35, to grab a sweet treat for your sweetheart. Get to come here and actually see the chocolate, you know, being made, um, and just, you know, visit the store and really see all that we do make. People can come in, um, buy gift baskets and um, chocolates, you know, just out of the case. There's plenty to see and taste and and enjoy. And you can visit the factory store for Bedray Chocolate in Davis at 37 North Colbert Drive, but you can find Bedray Chocolate at gift shops and grocery stores all across Oklahoma. Now from one sweet spot to another at this next spot, you can grab an oaky brewed cup of coffee and a dessert. And I've become a big fan of this next place. Come with me to Norman now to the Yellow Dog Coffee Company. Given how a great cup of coffee can really set the mood and tone for your day. I'm very into the coffee. Then if you are in the Norman area, this is the man you need to see. Robert Wilson is the owner of the Yellow Dog Coffee Company. He's a seasoned veteran coffee roaster and in my opinion is an artist, but he says. I would say probably 70% of it is science for me. 30% uh, of it is the artisan side. I, uh, you know, I, I focus on trying to bring the best out of each bean, and sometimes that takes multiple times of roasting and tasting and cupping the coffee to try to bring the nuances of the coffee out. The real power of this process is in the hands of the roaster. Rob takes roasting and brewing very seriously. The flavors in a cup of coffee are created and shaped in the act of roasting. Fresh is also key. And it's all about timing, heat application and airflow uh, in the machine as you're, as you're doing. Rob is currently the only roaster in Norman, so if you want the freshest cup of coffee around where the beans are literally roasted before you come in, then this is your place. The top selling coffee is the Ethiopian Sadama. It's a natural unwashed coffee and um, it's, a, it's a very kind of a fruit tendency to it, you know, berries and stuff. I roast twice as much of that coffee as any other coffee. I sell twice as much of it. We have uh, uh, all the drip coffee. We have uh, several espresso drinks and, and cold brews. I do pour overs are my specialty. 
uh, individual specialized cups of coffee of any of the coffee that I roast here, and it's all fresh. So I make an individual cup of coffee for people, and they really love that aspect of it. And we have pastries uh, that are all uh, baked and uh, here locally. Yes, you can get tasty scones and other pastries here, but if you want some mouth-watering, absolutely delicious cookies, you'll find them here. You really can't get better than a warm cup of coffee and a cookie straight out of the oven, fresh from the oven. And the woman behind those incredible cookies is Shannon Hanchett of the Oki Baking Company. She's based at the Yellow Dog Coffee Company. Right now, I make 42 different varieties of cookies, and they're all inspired by the history of the people and places that make our state great. You can't get cookies any better than that. Well, the coffee at Yellow Dog Coffee Company is awesome. I love it, and uh, it's always got, uh, you know, it's fresh. Uh, they grind it and they prepare it here, and the people that run it are the best, and I really, I really enjoy it. I love chocolate chip cookies, and so I don't think it's breaking the rules to have some co uh, a cup of coffee uh, with a chocolate chip cookie in the morning. I'm a regular coffee drinker, and today was my first time at the Yellow Dog Coffee Company. I got the light Brazilian roast, and it was great. The coffee was light and really flavorful, and one of my favorite parts is that it didn't leave a really strong aftertaste, which I really appreciated. Just in a word, excellent. Uh, it is, I don't think that you could get coffee any fresher than what you get here. I mean, it's literally coming out of that machine over there. We just had two scones this morning, uh, and they're just delicious, and you can taste the fact that they've been made probably this morning. That's the other thing about this place is everything's fresh. And by the way, the Yellow Dog Coffee Company is named after Rob and his wife's Labrador Retriever, Annie. It's also the name of their other business, Annie's Dog Daycare and Boarding. Yellow Dog Coffee is located at 109 East Tonawa in Norman. They're open seven days a week, 7.30 to 3, Monday through Friday, and 8 to 3 on the weekends. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma, the alligator, kangaroo, if it's walked, crawled, swam, or slithered, we've made it into jerky at some point. A paradise for jerky lovers, where to find this unique shop coming up. The pimento cheese hamburger, it's really, really good. And that's not all. See what else they're serving up at this Broken Arrow hotspot when Discover Oklahoma continues. The Oklahoma Travel Guide's got a fresh new look. It's your one-stop shop for awe-inspiring attractions, iconic Route 66, stunning escapes, and legendary local food. Get your free copy today. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from Tulsa's Gathering Place. One of the many amazing things you can do here, boat rentals. And get this, it's free. First come, first served during summer and early fall months. And if you're looking for some fun indoor adventures, Gathering Place has those for us as well. Absolutely. But no road trip here or anywhere else is complete without a snack or two. And something that almost every Oki enjoys is a piece of locally produced beef jerky. And good news for us, Shelly Mills has a line on where we can get some. Jerky.com is located here along Hudson, just south of Northwest 10th Street in the Midtown area in Oklahoma City. It's a small shop that's packed full of big flavor. Wall-to-wall -wall jerky, all flavors and varieties. It's basically like a, a, a manly gas station or a manly gift shop. Much of this jerky is even processed right here in Oklahoma, but it's not just beef. The alligator, kangaroo, if it's walked, crawled, swam, or slithered, we've made it into jerky at some point. There's also buffalo, wild boar, and fish meats. The unique and exotic meats and flavors are fun to try. Carolina Reaper, that's the world's hottest pepper for anybody that doesn't know. Um, that's also a really, really popular flavor of ours, um, mainly for novelty. A lot of people want to say they've tried the hottest flavor. The Oklahoma labeled jerky and the Bricktown jerky are more traditional styles, loved by locals, and made from Oklahoma bred grass fed cows. There are also non jerky treats to try. We've got rock candy, we've got chocolate covered bacon. Um, everybody loves bacon, so I mean, cover it in chocolate. I mean, that's, I mean, a no-brainer. There are varieties of summer sausage, sunflower seeds, a dozen flavors of licorice, chocolate booze-infused candies, and deep-fried peanuts, which are another customer favorite. You eat the shell and all like a potato chip, so more fiber and less, and less cleanup. They are tasty. 
Um, I use them to get out of cooking for holiday events. I just bring like a couple bags of those. Everybody's happy. <laughs> if you need a fun gift, there are gift boxes with a variety of themed treats or combo jerky packs, which allow you to try multiple meats and flavors. Another fun gift are these miniature jerky.com trucks. They're incense burners that come with different tiny wood logs to burn. So the incense uh, is, is just a way to kind of bring a, a campfire into your home. It's, it's a nice kind of relaxing way to, to come home and to um, decompress after work. So whether you're a jerky lover or needing a gift, jerky.com is sure to have something you'll enjoy. In Oklahoma City, Shelly Mills, Discover Oklahoma. You can shop the Jerky.com storefront in Oklahoma City at 918 North Hudson. They're open Monday through Saturday or order online anytime. The website is easy to remember, Jerky.com. Up next on Discover Oklahoma. There's nothing really that we make out of a box. Every single thing made from scratch. See what else makes this spot worth the drive when Discover Oklahoma continues. Why order a free Oklahoma outdoor guide? Uncover unique wonders. Cultivate your curiosity and wake up your wild side. Order or download your free copy today. What an amazing time we've had today exploring Tulsa's gathering place. And on the way home, we have a great idea for lunch or dinner. Jason Grubbs takes us to Toast and Franklin's in Broken Arrow. There is a great little breakfast and brunch place in downtown Broken Arrow. It is right in the heart of the Rose District. It's called Toast. It's wonderful. My favorite is the lemon blueberry pancakes. Linda Starbuck and a group of her high school friends meet here for breakfast once a month. This week it's a birthday. Lots of omelets and um, French bread, French toast, so there's a variety of things. Keep it simple with the breakfast tacos or fill up on a Paul Bunyan Benny. That's a chicken fried steak with eggs, gravy, and sriracha. Or try the homemade quiche. And once you're done with breakfast at Toast, stay for lunch or dinner. Just walk on next door to Franklin's on Main. There's nothing really that we make out of a box. Owner Clint McKinney describes his two restaurants as all-American cuisine with a twist. With a twist? Whatever we do, we always put a twist to it. He's been in the restaurant business most of his life, but doesn't look at the two restaurants as his own. Toast and Franklin's belong to the customers and employees. This is their place. It's not mine, it's, it's theirs. So we're kind of like one big happy family here. But our customers to us, they mean the most. And you know, that's something I want to make sure that everybody knows. On the menu at Franklin's on Main, there's everything from shrimp and grits to pulled pork street tacos. We had to try a couple of things, starting with the flame grilled ribeye that's perfectly seasoned with garlic mashed potatoes and Brussels sprouts. That's one of Linda's favorites. The prime rib, if it's on special. So that's my favorite, but just everything they make is good. You can put salmon on anything you want or get a bacon infused burger. The meat is ground fresh daily. They have a pimento cheese hamburger. It's really, really good. She's right. I had one of those for lunch too. And I couldn't get enough of those truffle fries. Clint's a big fan of the Rubens and Cubans. I love them. He likes to buy his produce from area farmers markets as much as he can and makes everything from scratch from the gravy right down to the sauces and cinnamon rolls. Whatever you order, there's gonna be plenty. They're large, they're very large. You get more than enough, you get some to take home. Very healthy, leftovers. <laughs> In Broken Arrows Rose District, I'm Jason Grubbs for Discover Oklahoma. Toast and Franklin's is open Monday through Friday at 11 a.m., but not until 2 p.m. on Saturdays. They're closed on Sundays. Find them at 203 South Main Street in Broken Arrow. No matter where your next road trip takes you, the Discover Oklahoma Dining Guide will help you find a great place to eat. All you have to do is just log on to our website, TravelOK.com, and click Request Free Brochures to get your copy. A big thank you to our friends here at Gathering Place for hosting us this week. 
If you've not been here to see it all for yourself, there's no time like the present to plan a trip. The playground is a huge attraction, but there's plenty to do for all ages. Enjoy the patio of one of their restaurants, try a little skating, or maybe take a free boat ride in season, of course. Check out their website, gatheringplace.org, for a look at all sorts of free events that showcase art, history, and entertainment from here in Oklahoma and all around the world. Coming up next Saturday on Discover Oklahoma, indoor fun right here in Tulsa. Who cares if the weather won't cooperate? And the Oklahoma-owned shop that's so popular they've opened a second location. We've got great gift ideas next week right here on Discover Oklahoma. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma.